Your first step before you start looking for specific properties to invest in is to take a step back and figure out your investment goals. Of course, it's always good to get higher returns, but these investments typically also come with higher risk. So this means maximizing returns might not be the right investment strategy for everyone. With the same amount of money to invest in, and even if we look strictly at investing in houses, not condos, what you choose to invest in might very well be different from someone else if there are differences in terms of your current or future situation. In this video, I'm gonna group our real estate investors into four main types, and then go through each type to show you how risks, cash flows, and returns might differ between each type. If you enjoy content like this, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you can see more videos like this made specifically for real estate investors in Toronto. Jumping right into things, these are the four generalized types of real estate investors. Like the name implies, conservative investors are those who take on the lowest amount of risk for the most stable but likely the lowest returns. Typically, investors in this group might be close to retirement or have retired, so their main objective of their investment is to provide regular cash flow to support their ongoing lifestyle. They don't really need to grow their wealth anymore, but rather they want to preserve it to at least hedge their net worth against inflation. Usually, there's also a preference for better liquidity so that they can cash out of their investments more easily at any given point in time without big negative implications. One step up this list is the group that I call balanced investors. These investors take on a little bit more risk for better returns. So instead of being focused on maximizing cash flows and liquidity, they are fine with a more balanced approach with returns coming from a more even distribution of appreciation, rental income, and leverage. In case you don't know, leverage lets you use borrowed money to grow your returns faster. But if there is a loss, it can grow your loss faster as well, so this does increase your investment risk. The other thing is that because you're using some of your rental income to service your monthly mortgage payments, Monthly cash flows will also be lower than the conservative investors, so you'll likely need income coming from other sources as well. Going further up our risk ladder are our growth investors. These investors make good income, but still like to keep it safe and make sure their investments service themselves. In other words, the rents that you get should be enough to pay for all of your operating expenses and your mortgage payments, so nothing needs to come out of your pocket at the end of every month. Now, one trend in real estate investments is generally that if you buy a property with higher appreciation, they typically have slightly lower rent yields. As a whole, the average returns for higher growth properties are better, but because there is a bigger weight on appreciation, which fluctuates more than rental income, they are inherently higher risk. This means that if the market swings the other way and you need to cash out quickly, there is a chance that you might be selling for a loss, especially in the short term. But if you hold it long enough, you should be better off than those who take on lower risk. Growth investors also take on higher leverage, which further magnifies your returns and your risk level. Finally, the last type of investors are even more aggressive which is why I named them unoriginally aggressive investors. These investors also have good income and likely no dependents or much lower monthly personal expenses than our growth investors. So aggressive investors tend to be able to stomach the biggest real estate risks out there. Essentially, these investors are looking for properties with the highest growth potential, maxing out their leverage for the best possible returns and possibly negative cash flows. Now, if you've watched my previous videos before, of course you'll know I'll probably dive into an example with numbers to help you visualize how actual risks, cash flows, and returns might differ. This time, to keep things simple, let's assume that we have the same $500,000 to invest in for all investor types. To narrow our scope down even more, let's zero in on investing in houses. Our conservative investors have the lowest risk tolerance need the highest liquidity, and need the highest cash flows, 
And so this search usually lands with properties that sees the lowest price fluctuations out there. In this case, we're going to go with buying a house, definitely not in Toronto, for $500,000 with cash to remove the higher risk element of leverage. The cap rate, in other words, the net rent yield on this house is very good sitting at 5%, which is higher than what we typically see in Toronto houses at around 35 to 4%. On the other hand, average appreciation is much lower than Toronto, sitting at just close to inflation at 3%. So in the most average case, our conservative investors annual return is 8%. But remember, these investors' main goals are cash flows, wealth preservation, and liquidity, and the main benefit of this house is that prices are very stable. So if there is a downturn, we might see appreciation dip down to 1%, which means the principal is still protected and the total return isn't far off at 6%. On the other hand, if there's a market rally, Appreciation might go up to 5%, which takes total returns up to a better 10%. You'll soon see that the range in returns on the sample property is the lowest, only fluctuating between 6% to 10% in any given year. So based on a $500,000 investment, we would have monthly cash flows of around $2,000 and an annual return between $35,000 to $45,000. Next, let's take a look at our balanced investor. Remember, this is the one with the better balance of appreciation, rental income, and leverage. So in this case, the cap rate is a bit lower at 4.5%, but appreciation makes up for it at a higher 4%. So if you look at the total returns before leverage, it's at 8.5%, and that's better than the conservative investment at 8%. These balanced investors are also okay with taking on some leverage. So in the sample property, our balanced investor will use 50% borrowed money at an interest rate of 2.5% to buy a $1 million property. And because they have to pay for monthly mortgage payments, their cash flows will drop to 1.3% of the purchase price each month. The benefit with choosing a more balanced investment is that you do have better returns before leverage and it gets even better with leverage. So after two times leverage, you're looking at annual returns of 14.5% in ROI. Just note that appreciation does fluctuate more, so for the sample property in any given year, appreciation might range from 0% to 8%. This means that if you need to cash out in the short term, you might end up making less on the sale compared to the conservative investor. For example, if you end up having to cash out in the first year and it turns out it's in a downturn, then you might be faced with no appreciation for balanced investors, whereas the conservative investors might still see a 1% appreciation. The good thing is that if you are able to hang on to it for a longer period of time, your average returns are likely much better at 14.5% per year instead of 8% per year. This means based on a $500,000 investment, you'd see monthly cash flows on the sample property of around $1,000 and the annual return might vary between $32,500 to $112,000, which is much higher than the conservative investor. Next, let's look at a sample property for our growth investors. These investors take on better growth opportunities so in our sample property, you might see cap rates closer to 4% and appreciation better at 5%, which offers better average returns before leverage compared to the balance investor. Growth investors typically also take on more leverage for even better returns, and let's say they put 35% down. Based on this example, we'd see cash flows closer to break even and total average returns after leverage at 21%, which is better than our conservative and balanced investors. This property will have bigger price fluctuations, so in the short term, it's possible to sell for less than what you pay for. Once you factor in higher leverage, you'd see much bigger swings in your annual ROI. Remember, this property is sitting higher on the risk ladder, 
So with $500,000 of investment capital, you can expect your returns to swing drastically from $16,000 to $195,000 in any given year. Finally, let's look at a sample property for our aggressive investors who choose the best growth potential and the highest leverage. These properties might see a lower cap rate of 3.5%, but better appreciation at 6%. In other words, this sample property has the best returns before leverage out of the four. And then this investor maximizes their leverage with 20% down, so after operating expenses and the mortgage payment, the aggressive investor sees around negative $1,000 of cash flows on this property each month. Now, we said this property has the best appreciation, but also the biggest swings in price. On a downturn, perhaps we might see a 3% drop in price. So these types of higher risk investments make sense if you can hang on to them for the long haul. In the long run, average returns are the best at 37.5% or 187,500 a year, but can also range drastically going from negative returns to high double digit returns in any given year. To summarize it all, the cash flows are usually best for conservative investors and the average returns are usually best for the aggressive investors. What's more important to see is that the risk level will increase as your potential return grows. In other words, you'll want to make sure you're still comfortable financially when things turn south in exchange for better long-term performance. As you can see, what you choose to invest in will depend on your financial situation and your risk tolerance profile. Even if we look at the same amount of investment capital and zero in on strictly houses, there are still very many options out there. This makes choosing the right investment property especially confusing for new investors and it can still confuse experienced investors who are facing changing life stages. So if you want an expert to help you hash things out, we'd be happy to help. We can look at your specific situation and then match you up with the best investment property that fits your profile. After we help you buy it, our team also provides renovations guidance, leasing and property management if you need it. So just connect with us if you want to learn more about our services by heading to the link in the description below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and look for us on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn if you want to hear from us more regularly. I wish you all the best in your real estate investing journey. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.